want to give you a brief introduction to the optical image stabilization capabilities that the DVX200 has. Now, yeah, we all know what OIS is and what it does. And if you're trying to hold the camera steady on a subject, handheld, and especially at long telephoto, that can be very challenging. I mean, in this shot, I'm trying to hold the camera as steady as I possibly can. And you can tell it's not really working. But when you turn on OIS, Wow, I mean, it really cleans it up and it makes it look a lot more stable. So the OIS really works well for compensating out panning and tilting motion, but there are other types of motions that could come into play. If you're handheld, what if it rolls a little bit side to side? OIS can't really compensate for that or just straight shifting from one side to the other or shifting up and down. Well, actually the DVX200 has a way to compensate for all of that too. If you're in FHD mode, not UHD and not 4K, but FHD, you can turn on the hybrid image stabilization and that gives you even more stabilization capability. It compensates for rolling and shifting and shifting up and down side to side. If you're doing a 1080 only project, this optical image stabilization combined with the hybrid image stabilization is very, very effective. The DVX200 actually has the ability to program the optical image stabilization to make it more suitable to the type of shooting scenarios that you're in. There are two parameters that you can control. You can control the frequency, you know, whether it's little motions happening very frequently or infrequently, and you can also control the amplitude, which is the size of the motion. So maybe you're trying to compensate out a little tiny vibration or a big sweeping motion. That's the amplitude or the frequency. And without getting into too much detail, I'll give you a few examples of what you might set this to for certain scenarios. Let's say that you are handheld and you're trying to hold as still as possible. In that case, the only motion that the camera may encounter will be tiny little motions, little twitches that you make. So in cases like that, you might get the best performance by setting the amplitude to one and the frequency also to one. But what if you're not standing still? What if you're not trying to hold the camera super steady? What if you're actually having to move with the shot? What if, what if you're doing like a walk and talk interview? Well, you're still gonna want those little motions compensated for, but you're also gonna need to compensate for big motions too. So in this case, maybe you'll get the best performance by setting the blur amplitude to five, but you'll still set the frequency to one. But what if we're not hand holding it? What if we're on a tripod? Do we even use OIS at that point? Generally, the advice in the camcorder community is no. You turn OIS off when you're on a tripod. However, I'll give you a scenario where it actually could come in handy. Let's say you're dealing with a situation that might introduce some vibration or shakes to the tripod. You're filming a political convention. You're in a, in a hotel ballroom and the speaker's way, way across the room at a podium. So you're super telephoto and your camera's up on a wooden platform. Now, generally, you're not gonna be moving the camera at all, it's gonna be locked down, but what if somebody comes walking by on that platform? That could introduce a little bit of judder or shake into the image. And on a rolling shutter camera, that can look kind of rubbery. It doesn't look great. I found that the OIS can actually be very helpful in this. If you set the custom OIS to off, you don't, you don't need custom OIS for this particular scenario. Or if you do set it on, set it to one and one, if the camera's not moving, if you're doing a lockdown shot, the OIS can do a wonderful job of absorbing out those little vibrations and giving you a much more stable image. Different scenario on the tripod is, what if the camera's moving a lot? Let's say you're filming a sports event, or maybe you're doing a, you know, a kid's dance recital and you're constantly panning between the kids and you're moving the camera a lot. Well, then you don't wanna use custom OIS of one and one. That won't work for you because that's designed for tiny little motions. You wanna allow for the big sweeping motion. So then in this scenario, you probably get better results by setting the amplitude to five and the frequency to three. So summing it all up, the OIS system here is kind of fantastic. It gives really solid, really good results in normal mode. But if you're in a situation where you're shooting 1080 and you turn on that hybrid mode, I mean, it's so good, I think, that there are times when I can leave the tripod at home. You know, you get a situation where you, you jam your elbows in, you put the camera up to your eye, so you get that three points of stabilization and turn on the hybrid. You can get tripod looking results sometimes, especially at wider angle. And then on top of all that, you have the ability to fine tune the OIS with the custom system to give you even better results under certain shooting scenarios. I think it's a really neat system. You definitely owe it to yourself to experiment with it. And if you're in a certain challenging situation, like, you know, trying to shoot out of a helicopter or something, you may be able to get better results by fine tuning it. Hope this has been helpful. Hope this has helped uh, 
give you a better idea of how the OIS capabilities work. And if you need more tips and tricks on how to use your DVX200, see the other videos in this series. Thanks for watching. Panasonic.